This is lesson uh, six, part two, and uh, today we'll uh, write our first program. Actually, it will not be a real program, but it will just be a flowchart that could be converted into a program once we learn enough about a programming language. But anyway, you saw this thing before, and just a reminder we talked about the variable and uh, we said that the variable can contain a value and last time I said that it can contain a number but it can also contain a character and many other things but for now we'll just concentrate with a variable that can hold a number the if statement was the, the diamond and we'll see how to implement the loop so we <clears throat> will open a new sheet here and this program that I'm going to write will look a bit silly but once I tell you something you'll see that it's not that silly and uh, well let's start as we usually do from the start on the flowchart if you remember this is the start shape and from here control will flow to an instruction and in the instruction I will write x equals 1 so x will be our variable as we discussed which means it's a, a place in the memory that's called an x and the computer knows that that place is called an x and that x could carry different numeric values so the first value that we put in is 1 and then from here we'll go to the next shape which will be a simple connector and we'll see why we have the connector a little later and from here the control will go into a diamond which will represent an if statement which will be a question and the question here would be is x greater than 10 so you saw that I assigned 1 to x and uh, you will ask yourself here is x greater than 10 of course initially the answer will be no but soon we will see and since with the diamond we always need a yes and a no we'll say if we say yes the control will flow to the end of the program And if the answer is no, then what we'll do is we'll do two things. First thing we'll do is we'll print x. If you remember, this shape was meant for printing. So you don't have to write the word print. We know that if you put a shape like this and there is a variable here, it will print x and after that we'll have another instruction and that instruction will say x equals x plus 
1. Now, this is a little bit puzzling. What does it mean x equals x plus 1? How can x be equal to x plus 1? This doesn't make sense. In mathematical terms, it doesn't make sense, but this is just a symbol. In computer science, what we mean when we say x equals x plus 1, it means that we take the x, whatever is there, we add 1 to it, and then we assign it back to x. So let's say if x was initially 1, after this command, what will happen, we'll first take the x, which is 1, we'll add 1 to it, right, like here, and we'll assign it back to x. So after the operation, x will be equal, you guessed it, 2. Right? So no matter what x is, this operation means take x, increment it by 1, and assign the result back into x. And because it's a variable, it could carry different values. So the same way it could carry 1, it could carry 2, etc. And from here, we just flow with our control back to the connector. You see that from the instruction, we have only one way to get out, because it's not an if statement. And then control will come here, and the only way out of here is this way. We can't go that way. So this will be our loop. Remember we mentioned loop? in the previous section and this is our loop over here now how many times this loop will get executed you can see that when x grows to be more than 10 the answer to this question will be yes so we'll flow over here and we end our flowcharts or our program so this loop will execute for x equals 1, and then it will come here, it will print 1, and then it will go here, increment it by 1, so x will be 2, and then it will come back here, and then here. Is 2 greater than 10? The answer is still no. We'll go here, we'll print x, which is now 2, so our prints will be 1, now 2, and then we'll go here, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 is being assigned to x, and then we go back here. Is 3 greater than 10? The answer again is no. If the answer is no, we come here and we print again 3. So what we're doing now is we're doing something that's called a dry run. We run the algorithm ourselves and we execute the commands as if we were the computer and we print the results that the algorithm or the flowchart prints. So this way we'll continue to print x and x gets incremented by 1 so you get the idea here that it will print all those numbers and the last number it will print when x is 10 it's still not greater than 10 so if x is 10 it will print the 10 and then it will increment it by 1 so it will be 11 once we go with 11 over here 11 is already greater than 10 and the answer is yes. So then we end the program. So the end result will be printing the numbers from 1 to 10. Now you can say that it's a silly program and a silly algorithm because we can print it ourselves, 1 to 10. It's no problem. But imagine if I put instead of 10 here, if I put a million, The program will do it in the same ease that it did it for 10. But for us to print 1 through a million would take a very, very long time. So now you can see where the computer could be useful. Just a simple example. And the next section will talk more about programming and algorithms and the usefulness of programming. So that's it for now.